in the time had arrived, as Dr. King says, nothing in all the world is more powerful than an ideal whose time has come. Nathaniel Bronner was born March 31, 1914, in Kelly, Georgia. Nathaniel's father, Gene, was a successful farmer and businessman, while his mother took care of the home. While growing up in the Bronner household, the children were taught the value of hard work and three main principles. Work hard, keep good company, and be honest. My dad got the entrepreneurial spirit really from his dad, and his dad got it from his dad. My great-grandfather owned a chemical company uh, back in, in South Georgia, back in, in the early 1800s. My dad's dad, you know, ran a huge farm. My dad saw him handling the employees that worked for him. He learned how to manage people. He learned inventory control. He learned how to handle money right from his own dad. And it put something on the inside of him. So my dad knew when he was five years old that he wanted to be a businessman. The Bronner household was not only prosperous, but it was also rich in spirit and love. Then, early one morning in 1919, evil came to visit. The Ku Klux Klan set fire to the family home. The Bronner family escaped unharmed. They had suffered a great loss. My father's had to endure um, in, in dealing with the KKK um, early on his, in his youth. First of all, he saw his, his own father, a strong black man who went out and developed a farm and he, had, he grew a lot of crops and he had his own store. And he was also now the first black entrepreneur my father had seen. And he had people that worked for him, he paid them wages. But one of the things that even the KKK saw in my grandfather was that they saw a black businessman who was now encouraging other blacks to ensuring them a positive way out. Several years later, Nathaniel rebuilt the family home on the same land his father acquired, proving no matter the obstacle, one should never give up, never stop. When right and God are on your side, there is no failure. At the age of 16, Nathaniel left his home in Kelly, Georgia for the big city, Atlanta. After his arrival, he followed in his older brother's footsteps and started selling the Atlanta Daily World newspapers, which he sold during his years in high school and attendance at Morehouse College, where he graduated in 1940. In 1941, Nathaniel Bronner was called to serve in the United States Army. During his four years of service, he took that opportunity to further his skills in the areas of promotion, marketing, and organizing social events. When he returned to Atlanta, he started working for his sister in her beauty salon and operating a fruit stand outside of the salon. Nathaniel noticed how busy the salon was and began to inquire about the culture of beauty. He had gone to the beauty school, went to Apex Beauty College, and it caused him, it fascinated him. So he said that I would like to go to Apex Beauty College and get my degree in it too. So he went and took up beauty culture. From his bicycle, he started servicing three other salons and selling beauty products to his newspaper customers. He saw that he made more of a profit from selling the products than the newspapers. It was then Nathaniel got an idea, and that idea launched the Bronner Beauty Empire. In 1947, Nathaniel partnered with his brother, Arthur, and opened their first store at 28 Butler Street, intersecting with Auburn Avenue. The business grew rapidly, so much that in 1948, they increased their employment. They brought in other family members and several other personnel. He found out later, more so than the finances, was once you have your vision, you know exactly where you are going, he said it's somehow the plans are open up for you. Later on, he was able to work in conjunction with a manufacturing company that made them sales representatives for them in the southeast region. And so he and his brother not only worked the vision, but they got out on the field with station wagons going from beauty salon to beauty salon, selling products, sometimes even with our eldest son, Nathaniel, in, in the car. He traveled with us. And I have always told him after I had come into the business, 
that you hire more employees than you need? His answer was, our women need employment. And he would just, if he would see a lady with a, with a child on her arms, and she didn't have, she, she needed help, come on, I give you a job. And this was how he operated. And I feel that from that compassion and from the love of trying to take care of women with the struggle of family and children, that it somehow sent a blessing back into his own life and into the business. And God caused that business to just flourish, you know? Sometime after Nathaniel had grown the business, he felt it was time for him to settle down. He prayed to God for a wife and his prayer was answered quickly. My husband is about 19 and a half years my senior, and I grew up with a teacher. He was my mentor. After I finished college, my mother said to me, you cannot stay in this city because there is no one here for you to marry. You must go to Atlanta, go to the big city. Go to Atlanta University and you will have a chance to meet other young men. And the very first day, the very first day on the campus. So I'm late running to the registration. So as we went to on campus, stood in the registration line, someone sneaked up behind me and copied my name off my paper. I, I was standing up in line trying to read the instructions. And he copied my name and saw that I was from Forsyth, Georgia, working all of these small towns, going into beauty salon after beauty salon. He asked me, tapped me on the shoulder, what might be your name? I told him my name. He asked me if I knew a special beautician in my hometown, and I told, I told him yes. I said, not only do I know her, but she's a member of our family church. But later on, uh, my sister saw me talking with him and she knew that he was older than I was. She took my hand and snatched me from him. He caught my other hand, so I'm stretched between my sister and my husband. And she said, come on here, let that old man alone. But finally he said, where do you live? I said, Bumstead Hall. <laughs> I got that out very quickly. Bumstead Hall. And about three days later, I, I received a call from him. Look, 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 look at the key. She was sending me to meet my husband. And my husband had prayed and asked God to let him meet his wife. And here both of us meet up, neither one knowing, you know, but the divine connection hooked us together. And how long were you married? Oh, uh, about 38 years before he passed. Mm -hmm. 38 years before he passed. One thing about our family, we are unique, which means my children grew up with a father and a grandfather in the home. The children were disciplined by the presence of the father. He carried a presence that demanded respect, which meant he began teaching them when they were five years old, each one. As our children were growing up, he made sure that he would educate the neighbor's children. If he would take his children swimming, or to play golf, he would take his neighbor's children, the children that our children had to play with, he would take them and would train them along with this kid because he said, if you don't train them, they'll get you. He didn't believe in just education alone. You had to have some kind of foundation to get the education, you know. He always said, you know, if you, if you have a fool and educate him, you'll end up with an educated fool. I only worked for my dad, and all of my brothers worked for my dad, and he didn't make us work for him. He presented to us an opportunity for us to learn, for us to grow, and to be able to earn and make our own money. And so uh, I started working for the business actually when I was 12 years old. He would uh, hire employees and develop them into entrepreneurs and send them out. So he, he never wanted to stunt uh, people's growth. He was a developer. He developed 
other millionaires and other people with their own businesses today. In addition to all of the, the, the business environment that we grew up in, um, one of the things that I found unusual about my household that I really didn't appreciate and recognize till I got older was that the, the level of character that I saw in my older brothers, being the youngest, I was able to look up at everybody as an example. And living with five brothers, not once did I hear any brother even utter one curse word. And it was just unusual from what I saw at school or television or any other place. I, I never saw a brother or heard of a brother uh, take a drink or smoke a cigarette or weed or, or anything. Nathaniel Bronner was dedicated in raising their children to be balanced and working smart in obtaining success while holding on to the values of which they were taught. And one of the Bronner family's most successful ventures is the creation of the Bronner Brothers Hair Show. The first Bronner Brothers Hair Show took place at the local YMCA on Auburn Avenue in 1947. It was a small show that had about 50 hairstylists in attendance. With each event, the number of exhibitors and attendees grew. The hair show became a very popular event, securing prominent guest speakers, including Jackie Robinson, Dr. Benjamin E. Mays, Dick Gregory, and Dr. Martin Luther King. To date, the Bronner Brothers International Beauty Show is the largest trade show of its kind, drawing beauty professionals of all ethnicities from all parts of the country and even the world to come and learn about new products, new skills, and new techniques. There's not just exhibitions and entertainment. Some attendees come to battle. This show is known for its hair competitions and their two main events the Barber Battle and the Hair Battle. Bronner Brothers has been around for years. I'm talking about like my grandmama age. To be a part of a long lasting company such as Bronner Brothers, it's a pretty big thing. They provide such a huge platform for stylists because it brings a lot of education, it's a lot of creativity, and this is where stylists come to value each other. So I think it brings so much fun and entertainment versus the other hair shows because they don't do a lot of battles and a lot of competing. So I got the call for, for doing the battle about a week before I was already planning to go to New York for a month. I was like, first of all, I gotta get it together and I gotta call my people, like all of my people and make sure they can come and help support me because coming from New York and going to Atlanta when I live in LA is like already a lot. This takes four to five months to really prepare for. Um, that concept was crazy. I mean, they wasn't gonna be ready for my Wonder Woman jet with the clear jet coming on the stage and my Maleficent flying from the ground. Everything that I wanted to do, I really couldn't do because things happened, things changed. I had to switch up my concept, so it's not easy. It's, it's a real stressful, stressful, stressful till right now situation. Like even the day before, it's very stressful. You know, it's not easy. People think, oh, we just get on stage and we comb hair, but no, it's it's a real long process that, you know, and I had to switch my concept three times. I probably put in every bit of maybe $7,000 already, just with wardrobe, hair. So I had to use a lot of my own personal money and I was like, you know what, it's worth the sacrifice. So the first Barn and Brothers show I came to, it was just nothing but like this spirit of love and this overwhelming excitement for creativity and beauty. And I had never really experienced a culmination of that much talent in one space. And so I'm just really, really appreciative that Bronner gives stylists that platform to grow and just flourish. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm just living in like a surreal moment of like happiness, success, like everything I worked for is, is just coming true. Nathaniel Bronner's vision for success in business never superseded his relationship with God or his family. 
It was his faith, tenacity, and determination that established a business that has transcended the hair care industry and inspired many others to pursue their dreams and see them through. The secret to all of it itself was his inner knowledge of whom he was. He had that relationship with God. He knew the power within. He knew the importance of vision. And if you have vision, then he knew that nothing would be impossible to you. He said a lot of people think it's money, but you need vision. He sought knowledge. He read the books on Think and Grow Rich. He read everything to motivate his mind. Not only did he do that, but he did it also for his staff. He knew the importance of salesmanship. He knew that we have to be inspired and we have to have the knowledge to go along with the inspiration. So he made sure that he saw those things and he attached himself with people who were going places. My father was the only one who I knew very close who had what I call the balance of life. He had three main principles, God first, family second, and business third. We have not changed any of the principles. Uh, the only thing we've done is grown. Uh, we've taken what my father taught us and trained us. We've done everything pretty much exactly like he's done. And I think that's something that my father has instilled from the beginning, that he's always wanted to give people first quality, first class, all of the time. Nathaniel's legacy of love for God, family, and the spirit of entrepreneurship has been passed down from generation to generation. I, I'm a pastor of a 20,000 member uh, church. We built a $32 million epicenter that has the tallest rock climbing wall in the state of Georgia. It has a bowling alley. It has a video arcade. It has a performance arts theater there. It has a conference center. This is a place where life is done. Some of my other brothers pastor as well and co-pastor a work. And uh, my oldest brother has a company called Century Systems that produces all kinds of health products and various kinds of things that have wonderful distributorship. My other brother, who's also uh, leading Bronner Brothers, uh, also has upscaled magazines. The greatest testament that he was a good teacher is that we were standing on his shoulders and we were able to go to higher heights. The business has expanded, our, hair, our beauty show has expanded, we've got more participants than have ever that have been coming to them. Uh, our distributorship has grown around the world since that time. It's been a, an expanding journey. It didn't die when he died. Bronner Brothers. 70 years in the beauty industry and still going strong.